Greetings everybody, Joseph Green Mountain Gold Trap back at the shop the following day after doing that ge geological uh, sampling yesterday. Um, so we'll go over a few things. As I said, I would uh, show you the stock works on the Tom Love camera. And as I told you in the video, I did suck up the stock works in this Reinhardt Dredge, which was purchased from Railroad Toy and Hobby. You can find them on Facebook. They have all kinds of stuff if you, you know, you don't have to be a local to buy from them. Um, they have uh, you know, gold prospecting equipment, including the Green Mountain Gold Traps, and they have vintage toys, collectible toys, just games, you, you name it. Game, old game systems, I think they still have. Um, you, you name it. So we'll go over the stock works. I also did bring home this rock, which the more I thought about it after shooting the video and opening my big mouth, I think that's obsidian inside of it. We'll take a look at that. I have the specimen of horn blend. We'll take a look at that. And we'll also be taking a look at, because I had M&M Prospecting asking about which app I was speaking about in the video. So I'll give you a look at that as well. And also this North American rock collection that I purchased. Um, there's 100 specimens in, in here. 30 igneous rocks, 40 sedimentary rocks, and 30 metamorphic rocks. Um, we're not going to go through all of them, but I'll show you the andesite. Um, we'll take a look at the um, the obsidian, which I think is embedded inside this. And we'll probably also take a look at the one with olivine inside of it. So, get back to you in a bit. <laughs> No rest. No, no. I've been down so long that my mind can't get no rest. No, no. This ain't easy, darling. Cause the devil was on my trail. I've been running. First thing we'll go over is the the app, which is right there. It's called Rocked R O K D, all capital letters. R O C K D. Sorry about that. So in here, you're able to see. I really wish this camera would focus better. Alright, so this area is known as the Taconic Mountain. 
it's it's under the we're in the Green Mountain Range in between the Green Mountains and the Taconics and for some reason this area is classified as the Taconic Mountain area um, but it gives you the age which is Cambrian conglomerate sandstone down it and the stratigraphic unit is Dunham Dola Stone and let's see location it tells you the location your GPS reading it gives you your elevation and then you can go to the map you can go to let me see paleo well I guess it gives you different uh, rotation model and maps courtesy never mind that um, I guess you can you can move this and it shows different eras so the plates continuously shift and move the earth shift and moved um, which is pretty common knowledge and we'll go back if you have any fossils in the area it'll tell you what those fossils are and these two here the Brunton and the minerals are the two key features that I'm always going into so if I go into minerals it'll give me the common rock formation or the common rock forming minerals in the area and mineral groups and it just brings them down on a list and it tells you everything that's that's in your area and same thing with the mineral groups it just brings down a whole list so providing you have internet access in the field wherever you are this app is very very beneficial so anyway now oh let me go back in there the other one that I'm always looking at is the Brunton okay now this is dealing with formations your your bedrock formation and you there's different or excuse me structures there's different structures so in this case this deals with strike and dip you've probably heard that in certain videos and strike and dip looks like this now the top is considered the map view and if you were to cut the earth in half like a piece of cake um, that's the cross-section view so the map view is your strike which is the surface and then the cross-section view is your dip and that tells you which direction everything's going in so here it's uh, almost a west-east pattern uh, 265 degree strike by one degree north so it's a very shallow very shallow dip here the lines would be almost straight so that's pretty interesting stuff but uh, other structures are anticline you have syncline basin and dome and plunge but strike and dip is the one that most prospectors are always looking into all right I'll get back to you in a minute here all right now let's take a look at these here now number one through number 30 so this whole area right here these are all known as igneous rocks now igneous rocks are formed from the molten state and rocks of this type cooled deep beneath the surface are called intrusive rocks but those that reach the surface are called extrusive rocks so we're seeing stuff on the surface so those are extrusive obviously um, but anyway, the ones we really want to take a look at are number 12, number 16, and number 29. Number 12 is the horn blend andesite that I was telling you about. And inside here, we'll get a closer look at this on the Tom Love camera. But inside this, you'll see... I see you can't get this thing, this stupid camera to focus. But there's little black specks within the matrix of the horn blend. Hornblende being the host rock. 
And then of course you have your obsidian, which is what I believe is inside of that other black rock. Something like this would be um, something that they would use to do napping, shaping like uh, arrowheads and so on and so forth. And then number 29, that is paradotyped, but inside the matrix is olivine. And we'll get a closer look at these in the Tom Love camera in just a moment here. Alright, number 12 in the collection, which is the um, horn blend and the sight. See the black specks inside of it. And I'm thinking, and I'm not sure Wayne would have to correct me, but I'm thinking that the black specks inside of it are biotite. I'm not sure if it's obsidian or not. It's one of the two. It's either obsidian or biotite. biotite. Um, see, it's got a... Of course, if my fingers are there, it's got a slight pinkish look to it. The gray light light gray Let's see what the other side looks like so that's one of the things that I was looking for yesterday while I was there now we'll take a look at the obsidian Number 16, very glassy. And all three of these are of the igneous rock type. Right in the center of the screen, it's kind of a, a rainbowish look. <laughs> a little bit there. Now, this is one of the major things that we'd want to be looking for as well. You see that? Olivine. We'll be looking for that inside the stock works for sure. Little green specks. Number 29, Paradotype. Take a look at this one here, um, because it's it's you know it's not it's not really that big, but it's quite heavy in size. So I want to weigh it as well. Get this United States Postal Service scale turned on. Comes in at one ounce and eight point zero. One and eight point zero ounces. Hmm. Okay. So let's take a look at it in the Tom Love. And again, the black specks inside of it is either obsidian or biotite, which I'm not sure. Like I said, folks, I'm just learning all of this stuff. <laughs> All right, so I'll be back to you in a sec. We'll take a look at it in the Tom Love. All right, so here we have in the Tom Love camera, and I've already taken a quick peek 
and inside here I am clearly seeing if I can find it again There is olivine inside this. Definitely olivine in here. See if I can find something to point with. This pencil's probably going to look massive in there. Where is it? Right in this area right here. All the way around right through here. That's olivine. And I'm seeing it all throughout it, but. center of the screen you can't miss it very nice let me turn this over sit still bug. What's inside the bug? Hmm. Almost looks like a crystal inside there, but not really. Interesting, folks. In this, uh, I've got it on the round end. side is what you can really see the olivine in.
You know, Wayne, it'd be nice if uh, Jeff Slade got the wind of these types of videos and could come and put his two cents in comments. That would be really cool. And you as well, which I'm sure you will. But I know I'm seeing all of Ian in here. Without a doubt. <laughs> yeah. Nobody can tell me that's not all of Ian. Not going to happen. That is all of Ian. Alright, so I guess we will move on to the stock works now. Back in a bit. Alright, so now we have, I forgot about the horn blend before we take a look at the stock works. Now we're looking at the horn blend. In the Tom Love, you can see quartz embedded, some iron. And this is what is found within the lining of a breccia tube. Nice black speck right in the center of the screen. Another one in the center of the screen there. A bunch of them in there. So this tells me that Horn blend would also be another rock that may be beneficial to crush up and see what's inside of it because of the quartz that's inside, quartz being basically a lubricant within the molten lava that comes up. It's in liquid form. Gold gets trapped inside of the quartz and it can get trapped in other things as well. like the hematite, it can get a squirt of gold. What is that? Somebody help me. <laughs> help me. What is that? What is the blue? It didn't come in contact with anything blue to get that transferred over to the surface of this, so... Or I should say it didn't come in contact with anything blue in my possession. Alright, I've had enough of this. Now it's time to go on to the
stock works and see what we've got inside that. Back to you in a bit. All right. Recording. I'm seeing reds, clear quartz, light grays, light yellows. coming from the lights up underneath the lens look at the red be nice if that was from the corundum family which is <clears throat> red would be the ruby and all the other colors sapphire pink there's a pink one in the center of the screen some really light light colored olivine in there a couple pieces so far that almost look like gold but I wasn't quite sure if it was or not this isn't all of the stock works by any means I have to put a little bit in here at a time because I, I don't want depth because I won't be able to see everything
in the center of that. It sure looks like there's the red one in the center. Let me get it exactly centered. And then there's one just below it, slightly to the left. The one above in the center looks clear, like it could be part of, you know, corundum. And the one down in the bottom looks more like that iron stone, which is what I always call my focus stones. Which, right here. It's a bigger one. Alright, so that's the first little batch of stock works. I'm going to shut the camera off and continue to go through this. If I see anything significant, I'll bring you back on. Back in a bit. Alright. <clears throat> so I'm seeing a lot of clear pinks, yellows, green. Well, green would be the olivine. Um, not so much in the center of the screen right now. We've got a piece of olivine for sure. It's a light mint green. But the clear yellow and pink and red, seeing those. And really, really light, light green, which I'm sure has got to be the olivine as well. Kind of like champagne color right in the center of the screen right there, kind of clearish. There's a piece of gold. I've seen about eight or nine pieces of gold so far. Looks to be two of them there. Maybe another one in there. Another one. Another green one, light, light green in the middle of the screen. piece of gold in the middle of the screen. More olivine. in a little bit here. Okay, I'm going over the last of it right now. So I figured I'd bring you back in for the remainder. It's more like green, olivine. Tiny speck of olivine in the center of the screen right there.
there's a right in the center of the screen a yellow clear yellow Piece of gold, center of the screen, more olivine, another piece of gold. All right, so that's going to conclude. Going through the stock works now. I have everything, once I dump this in here, I have to put just a little bit in there at a time, because <clears throat> you don't want anything more than just the surface of the bottom with stock works. And that was everything I just went through. So now, I'll end up panning this back and seeing if I can get the extract the gold out of it. There's some really mighty fine tiny tiny pieces in there so I don't think I'm gonna do that on camera and video. It's not that big of a deal but anyway I thank you all for watching. That concludes this part of this video out of part one I guess you could say it's part 1a <laughs> and my battery is going to die so I'll catch y'all later thanks for watching don't forget to like share comment and subscribe we'll be back for more of this it's gonna be a series and then hopefully a like a documentary at the top of at the end of the year see ya